Hello everybody, welcome to Nego Terra Odyssey. Today's reading is going to be about law of attraction, you, upping our vibration and our frequency and how we can do this and how we are going to do this and what messages you're going to receive that are going to help you do this. Now, if you guys listen to me daily, you'll know all my readings are usually about positivity through the power of suggestion because that works for me and has guided me throughout my life. When I look for something that lifts and elevates me and makes me feel good, I do the next best thing, the next positive thing. When we are filled with gratitude and love, we bring more of that into our orbit. It's more healing. It's more relaxing it's more serene and we also provide other people in our orbit the same kind of energy because emotions are very contagious you guys have seen it right you've been in a store where people are anxious and in a hurry and sighing you start to feel agitated or you walk into a party and there's great music playing you know the opposite people are swaying having a good time laughing you feel your body relax you feel you know you're kind of like your groove happening and you are feeling good and feeling elevated right we have to tell ourselves a different story when we start to feel doom and gloom, okay? Um, it's a process of raising your vibration from a lower vibrational thought into a higher vibrational thought. Uh, you wake up, say you feel a little creaky, your bones are a little tired, um, you have some things to do. You can start that same old cycle of habitual patterning. Oh, I'm so tired, I have so much to do. Or, wow, I'm really excited that I get to participate at life in a new way. I get a sense of adventure. I get to be creative today. I get to be with people I love. All of a sudden, you know, you start thinking of all the things that you look forward to during the day, right? A great cup of coffee, seeing your animals. You are totally telling yourself a different story. It's in a way, it's changing the story that your conscious and subconscious mind is telling you about your current, past, or future situations. Um, if we wake up with the same attitude every day that life is going to be tough, we look for toughness. We look for those mountains as opposed to those molehills. If we think everything's going to inspire us and we're looking forward to being creative and giving and sharing love and being, you know, just effusing life with sunshine and vibrancy, that happens. I'm not saying I'm Mary Poppins 24-7. That doesn't happen with me. I, I have a responsibilities. I have a family. Um, I have a lot of animals. I care for all of these things. Yet I see it as a blessing and something that I look forward to doing as opposed to an obligation or um, work, right? My work, I am so lucky. I don't even t call it work. I'm like, I have to go create this video. I have to, it's really what I do. I have to go create this piece of jewelry. It's lovely. And I'm very fortunate that I get to do that. But I am at that point in place in life now because I told myself a different story. When I work for companies that didn't respect my time or things of that nature, um, I would feel it. I would get nudges from the universe. Listen, you are spinning your wheels here. You're working for a company that chews up people and spits them out. Why are you doing this? You, you know, yes, you, you love your clients and some of your coworkers and stuff, but guess what? Um, in the end, you will be giving and giving and giving for very little reward or positive, you know, in reinfusion. So if you work for yourself, you can do your utmost, but pace yourself as well, right? You are not at the mercy of somebody else's whim or good mood when it comes to, you know, making your schedule or giving you a raise, things of that nature. I give myself a raise every day. I give myself pistachios and luxury num num items. <laughs> it's so lovely when I go in the store, I still feel like a rock star when I'm like, oh, $15 pistachios. Yes, please. Like I will give give myself some special treat that I used to really budget out because I thought, oh, that's impractical. This is rewarding ourselves, telling ourselves a different story. Yes, we can afford that. Yes, we deserve that, right? Practice gratitude, raise your vibration and manifest everything gloriously. See what you can manifest with gratitude. Start right now. Say you want to cheer yourself up. And I, I bet there is one clear way you can do this and it works for me every time I step outside and I listen to the glory that is all the birds around, all the fun animals, all of that. So you guys, we're going to have a three card choice today. And um, here are some of the topics. How can I infuse more self-love and compassion into my daily life? Am I clear on what my soul really wants? Am I communicating my needs? This is huge. If we don't tell people what we want and what we expect, how do we expect to get that? Okay. So we have to communicate our needs, not only to other people, but to the universe. This is really what I'd love to happen and materialize in my life. Okay. I'll make a list universe. I'll write this down. I'll make an affirmation board. I'll say, you know what I really want and send that forth. Okay. And remember you guys, it's so easy to start mantras for yourself. I am beautiful. I am unique. I am exquisite, powerful, worthy, 
joy, lovable, courageous, strong, smart, unforgettable, amazing, healthy, all of that. Use these mantras, say these, start that board. Anything that you look at that gives you a pick me up, do that for yourself, you guys. And also, I'm really excited. We're going to be using for your first card on each one the Sweet Us Domination Deck. I love this. They're affirmations to motivate your creative maniac mind. They're just funny and they're really lovely. So, we're going to begin with number one and we're going to do tarot right away after this. It's going to help us kind of get a compilation of how we can do this and infuse more self love because this is really what you're manifesting, how you're manifesting. And it's so simple that you just focus on something that you want. You believe that it's coming, you have gratitude for it, you release it to the universe, and you don't care about the hows, whens, or all of that. You leave that up to the universe. You have gratitude for the fact that you are going to have this arriving on your doorstep. It's as simple as that, you guys. It's a very simple process. So we're going to start with number one right now, you guys. And it says, in your compassion, oh, sorry, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete, right? Choose a self-care action to do today. Set stronger boundaries. This is huge. Um, if we don't let people know where, you know, that line in the sand is, oftentimes they'll cross it. I have to fan on blast, so it's like blowing everything around. Meditate and listen to your heart. Speak to yourself with compassion. I'm always advocating to talk to yourself like a younger, you talk to a younger sibling. You never tell them they were fat, ugly, stupid. You would never say that. So why in the world are you saying that to yourself? Number one, focus on your strengths and say those out loud. I do this all the time before I do weeds. You know, if I have a lot going on and um, I, I'm and I need to kind of just like regroup, you know, I say out loud, "You're an excellent orator. You have a, a great voice. You have a powerful speaking voice. You have you give great advice because you study and learn every single day. Things like that. I get, you know, I talk myself up. We need to do that for ourselves. Say yes to something you're afraid of. I did this when Yale was doing a study and they asked me to participate. I'm super claustrophobic. And they're like, Mello, you claustrophobic? I'm like, nope. So right away I start sweating when they told me, you know, we were going to do some brain scans and some fun tests and things like that. And I was like, oh Lord. And right away I remember Marissa Pierce saying, whenever we do something like get on a plane, if we're afraid of it, we can convince ourselves of anything. So we say, it's like a little mini vacation. Where else am I going to see the clouds? Same thing when I was going in the scanning machine, I was like, you get to just sit, lay and daydream for 60 to 90 minutes, you know, and it's like, and you can just do dreamscaping and make plans. And, you know, and I convinced myself it was no big whoop and it absolutely wasn't. I didn't have one moment where I felt antsy whatsoever. And um, it was really nice. Okay, you guys stay away from drama negativity. That's pretty much my number one rule for myself and should be for most people because guess what? They will, people that are dramatic will always try to inveigle us into the drama and the labyrinth of garbage that they cover their life with. It's a, it's a, it's a way for them to obfuscate, to um, redirect energy or focus. It's a way to create chaos so you don't have to look at true problems in your life. Otherwise, why would you bring something up that does nothing in your life but cause difficulties? Any reality you show when there are big blowups and arguments, that's where it comes from drama. People speaking ill of others and it getting back to them. Who wants to be inveigled in that? Not me. Ask for help and allow it all the time. I'll do this with my family. If I have mega jewelry orders, I'm like, can you please go up and get the packaging? Can you please locate this? You know, and I'll involve my family and, and they help out. And then I feel good. I feel like, you know, they reap the rewards. I take them places and buy them nice things and do things for them. So they in turn help me in my business um, endeavors as well. So it's really nice. Great three things down that you're grateful for. This is huge. And I do this mentally. As soon as I wake up, I think of three things I'm grateful for. First, the fact that I woke up, I'm healthy and I'm alive. Secondly, that I get to see my family and the crazy animals running around. I get to feed them and they show me such love and appreciation. I'm, I'm serious. I feel like crazy. Um, Dr. Doolittle, when I go out my yard, the turkeys come, the crows come, the cats, and they now all oddly can eat very close together. And it's hilarious. I have such gratitude for that because I have like a crazy animal menagerie and I love animals. So think or write down right away when you wake up because it brings up your vibration because gratitude comes into this. Now, first we're going to pull in a funny, um, uh, sweet ass domination deck. And then we're going to go to the tarot real quick and see how you can pull in some more of this energy. I keep my attention and intentions in alignment and nothing can stop me from world domination. These of course are funny and silly exaggerations, but they're, they're really cool. If you intend on creating the life you love, but you only focus your attention on muscle beach speedo competitions or celebrity news feeds, your intention is powerless. This really does speak to 
saying, oh, I, you know, I want to start a company and I want to advertise. Yet, if you dwindle your time meaninglessly away by watching TV and not having any action towards it, it really, nothing happens, right? You're not having any forward action or implementing steps to have this turn into a reality. We can dream a little dream, but we also need focus, intention, and action behind it, right? If your attention is disciplined, but you have no intention for your vision, your mission is aimless, right? We have to say the who, what, when, where, why is all of this, right? If you breed, oh, sorry. If you breed your attention with your intention, your visions will come to life, right? You set intentions, how you want it to be, when you want it to be, all of that. Pay attention to your intentions and the world shall be yours. Please don't use your new powers for manifesting speedo competitions. Seriously, I used to do this. Like I believed when I was really young that wishing and manifesting would make things come true. However, now I know as an adult that we have a focused intention on something. Say, um, I want to go and I want to complete building a shelf, right? There's my intention. Do I put my focus? I go in and now let's get some action behind it. I get all the tools and resources I need, the wood, the hammer, all the supplies. Then I have follow through in action and I actually build it with focus intention. I'm not worried about anything else that I am resolute to complete this task. It has my utmost attention. And I'm also very aware in present moment, um, little tiny details, right? Therefore, um, I'm going to measure things correctly. I'm paying attention. I'm not worried about what's for dinner or what's happening tomorrow. I am I am just adamant about getting this perfect shelf done and that is it. And I shouldn't even say perfect, but to the best of my abilities, okay? That's what it's about. If you want to start that first chapter in your book, you've kind of got to um, have focus and intention. So let's see, you know, I just want to get, I'm going to take two cards and we're going to have the main focus be on what your main thing was this, how you can infuse more love and compassion. And here you go. Good social connections, being giving and loving. This fills this card out beautifully. How we can have this happen and be. This is talking about respecting all things that are placed on earth. People, plant, whatever it is. The Queen of Cups respects all of this and honors other people's thoughts, their wishes, and their words. We don't interrupt other people or mock them. We allow each person the right for personal expression and ourselves. And people will allow that in us because we allow it for them. I definitely feel that all these type of things are two-way streets. And when we treat people with kindness and compassion, they in turn will do that for us. We be truthful at all times. Honesty is a test of one's will within the universe. You know, we don't, why lie? Why do that? Because then it's like you're constantly having tug of war with this ghost. Did I say that? What did I say? And I find once people start like telling on truths, it comes very easy for them to, to keep doing that. So just be truthful. There's no reason to try to create a facade of our life when we're our authentic, genuine self. That's when people really appreciate us, right? We respect the privacy and personal space of others as well. Um, just one of those things. There are there's a kind of sacredness in items and, and things within people. And we respect that space and we honor that. And this is also too talking about the queen of cups. It's about um, treating guests in our home with a lot of consideration, serving them the best food, giving them the best, you know, thing where we really honor them. You know, if they're staying over, we give them the best bed with beautiful, fresh sheets and we make them comfortable and we're honored to have them and they're honored to stay in our home as well. Those type of things. It's, you know, how we infuse all of this because I find that when we start to treat other people really well, we recognize how we want to be treated as well, which is really nice. I think I'm going to turn this fan down because it is buzzing around like a crazy so you guys, that is you, you know, I feel like when you branch out and you connect with people and you speak lovingly, it comes back to us. It really does. And this is saying, take it easy. Don't be judgmental or critical on yourself. Honor yourself. Use great inner dialogue, letting yourself know you can have, do, and be whatever you want. Take a chance on your creativity and your abilities to express things from your heart. And then things will fall into place. So that is you, Group 1. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to press like and subscribe, you guys. And all my links are down below. Please come see me on Instagram at sparkrist11 and get in on all the contests and giveaways. If you subscribe over here and you follow me over there, automatically enter in everything every single week, every giveaway. It's just a fun draw. It's it's I call it contest, but it's just giveaways, really, okay? It's my Etsy store. Everything else is down there. Yeah, you guys, I just got... Oh my gosh, I just got this strand of um, really grade A, triple grade A faceted fluorites. These stones are unbelievable and I'm going to make them into a whole bunch of different things. Earrings, bracelets, necklaces, 
delicate, beautiful, colorful, and out of this world. So I'm really excited to make some things out of that. So keep checking my Etsy store for some new things on um, tomorrow and Tuesday. There'll be some great stuff in there um, added to it. So number two, am I clear on what my soul really wants? I have to do this. I reevaluate every day and I'm like, by the way, am I making this list out loud and, and reiterating it to myself in the universe? Take out the shoulds and the limitations. Get out of your head and pay attention to your heart's desires instead. If you knew it was impossible to fail, what would you do? Wherever you go, go with all your heart. Today's soul action is ask yourself, what is it your soul really wants? What is your heart crave? And then take a step in that direction. A lot of my clients and people are saying that they want to feel a little more satisfied. They want a little more variety stimulation and excitement in their life. I'm like this too. If I don't have something to look forward to, I can let a little doom and gloom seep in there because then I'll start to notice stuff. I'm not someone who is ever bored. I have way too much stuff going on. Like I just don't. And if I ever start to feel that, then I'm going to know something's wrong. Cause I always got a million unfinished projects, you know, that I start and I get excited, but because I have so many creative endeavors and I work out of home, I constantly have all my things right at my fingertips so I can just start to work and create right away. But oftentimes I'll say, you know, what, what is it my soul really wants? And it wants beautiful, loving connections. It wants to feel professionally and emotionally and spiritually satisfied. So it means a little bit of everything each day, practices, meditation, focus, learning, all of that. I want to derive satisfaction in my day and know that I put it to good use, but as well took beautiful leisure time to relax, laugh, and not do anything as well that it has to be like productive. You know, I want to listen to birds. I want to watch a funny program and just, just sit and daydream as well, right? That's what I want. I want to infuse my life with rest, but connections and all of that. So, you know, we kind of have to let ourselves know that we're worthy of that. We're worthy of our dreams. We're worthy of um, what we want. I'm going to take both of those since they both snuck out. We're going to see how you can get more of this done too. Nine of coins. You guys are working towards your dreams of abundance. These cards, the fan is like blasting right on all these. And let's say get over whatever this heartache, whatever this problem is. And I'm going to pull a clarifier on this. Yeah. Oh, wait, that one. Let me Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. It's funny. These decks are, are tricky. This, the fan is kind of like helping me and helping me get poppers. Let's start with this nine of coins. So right away, and as well as this beautiful high priestess, mature emotional energy that's coming through conscious, loving, creative, intuitive, you might be asked to step into a role as a leader or a coach or a mentor as well, because you're, you're really showing that you have devoted guidance and loyalty and you're creative and you're able to express things. You have great generosity within you and you're also going to, the universe is going to be generous with you. You're getting over whatever that slump is where you felt a great disappointment. I felt a lot of you guys, you might feel from a um, medical viewpoint or some kind of diagnosis that you're starting to feel run down and tired and you're, you feel beat up over it. You know, it's heartache. I don't feel like it's so much from, um, just people that have suffered breakups or separations. This is also people that receive news of, of, you know, family members too, that are on well or themselves. And it's like, it does, it just squeezes at your heart. But this is saying, let's go to our intuitive heart and soul space that says, Whatever we tell ourselves is what we start to believe. So how about we create a new story for ourselves that we are healing and we are growing and we are elevating in our spirituality and vibration and that we are divinely protected and guided in this land. This land of abundance and richness is always available to us, but we have to snap out of it and wake up to it. You know, I'm only human. I go, I go to these crests and valleys at times because I'm very sensitive to how others in my family, friends, and around me are feeling. So when I tap into that energy, sometimes, sometimes of despair as well, you know, they despair of finding the, the right love. They despair of, um, you know, getting over certain addictions, usually with food based things or, or stuff like that. And I can feel that. And I can, if I start to really focus too intently on that, I can feel that. So I know what it's like. So I alleviate that by going to the spiritual right away. If I start dealing with my cards and my crystals and things, I immediately feel lifted. Spirit was, is within me and connecting and helping me drive those kind of ghosts away. Now, now your big keywords here is awaken, allow, shift, transform, wisdom, vision, gratitude, exploration, confidence, adventure, all of that. That's what you're seeking. That's what your soul really wants. It's like, you know, what? I want some adventure. I want some mystery. I want some, you know, 
flirtation and love and gifts and all of this. So again, make lists of positive aspects of things you love. Don't complain anymore. Take that out of your itinerary. I have to do too. If I ever see myself going, oh, it's so hot or this or that or going on, I just stop myself because guess what? That's very pattern inducing of then all of a sudden more negative, more negative. You ever see that in a group where someone's like, oh, I'm so tired. And someone's like, oh, I know I have a headache. And someone's like, oh, my feet hurt. It's contagious. So let's not do that. Let's take that out of our vocabulary and think of joy and gratitude and um, cultivating new confidence in our abilities and where we're going to venture in next. And with this, you know, it's like, just start your day with, I can do whatever I want. I'm excited. I'm going to make a yummy home cooked meal. I'm going to um, look at some Bob Ross or something that makes me laugh and I'm going to venture forward and feel good. But always, you're always going to go back and recapture this beautiful high priestess energy that says your spirit has so much strength and love and vitality in it. So right away, start talking it up, you up, your abilities, your fearlessness, the opportunities and all these aspects about yourself that you like right away, write down three things that you like about yourself and keep remembering that and keep doing that and keep referring to that and build and build and build on that because you're, you know, you're, you're, re you're reaching it for sure. So I love that for you guys, group three, really, you know, what is it your soul really wants? We sometimes have to remind ourselves and, and work towards that. I'm going to put this ring on that because that's driving me crazy. Okay. Now I'm going to have a deep breath and calm down because I feel like I'm going 380 with my hair on fire here. <laughs> you know, you know, I, it's, when I read a lot, I have so many things that buzz through my head like again uh, who did I help today and how do I think they felt about that and what do I think it's important to convey for messages to my family like I just um, I just had a wonderful little outing I asked Ian could you chauffeur us over to Fairway because I knew Hagen really wanted some sodas and goodies and so did I I like to kick back late at night and reward myself with a nice like iced coffee and a little chocolate treat and relax and just savor that and every once in a while it's like um i like i love grocery shopping with hagen he's fantastic and hilarious and he's just hilarious to shop with and i love him and he's a foodie and we get all excited and it was a really nice outing and i feel like that's something my soul needs every day to connect with one of my children and laugh and and just have a good time with them and that's another thing that i remember so now you guys were on number three which is communicating my needs now I had to learn to do this because I used to always be the giver, the doer, the problem solver and all of that. And I would be exhaustified and I'd be like, okay, you cannot feed anybody from an empty table. And I would do this unbeknownst to myself until I just all of a sudden was like, had resentment towards my family. I really would, I would get home from work when I worked my regular nine to five, go out, go to the grocery store, get all the goodies that they wanted, come home, clean up after them, do all this stuff and just do it and do it and do it. And then all of a sudden I'd be resentful going, um, I'm sorry, you had to sit in a classroom all day and, and then just come home and destroy the house. Like I would start to feel like that. And what I realized I needed to do was to set the boundaries and ask, participate, help do dishes. And you know, and as soon as those messages were conveyed, um, you know, they would do it. But the thing was, I wasn't expressing it. So they didn't know. I didn't know. And we need to do that. Whatever it is, you guys. Okay. Your needs matter. What are you needing right now that you haven't communicated? What are you afraid of? Is it possible that what you are fearing is not true? So journal, what are my needs? Am I saying no and yes enough based on my desires? Am I telling the full truth? Do I believe my needs matter? Do I need to share them with others? A hundred percent they matter. And if you don't voice them, people really won't know. Okay. When communicating my needs, what am I resisting and with whom? What do I need in order to feel safe enough? Let me make a quick um, a composite to this too. What used to happen with me and the way I would go about it wrongly was I would let all this stuff just fester and burn inside of me. Nobody picks up this. Nobody does that. And then I would just explode and then nobody would really hear me because they would get defensive because I was using words like always and never and things that just aren't true, right? I would boil up and that's when, and I would also address these things when I'm tired. So I really make sure I'm in a, I'm really lucky that I can just go with the groove I want now and I'm never overtired because I stop when I feel that way. You know, I do what I do when I'm inspired to do it and that's it, full stop. I'll speak to the people I want to speak to, help people when I want, do readings when I want 
want because I need that good creative energy and have it flown because of that I operate much differently now I have patience I have calm I have uh, much more astute kind of wisdom when something is approachable my emotional intelligence is up because I don't let myself get overtired and then now my family is beautifully responsive to any request because I don't go in attack mode I don't go into always and never I'm not pointing fingers I don't get accusatory I ask I say listen I'm feeling really worn down I appreciate it so much if you could help me out and put on a couple loads of laundry that will do wonders people innately want to help one another especially if they love you and they're in your family however they don't want to be accused of never doing work they don't want to be yelled at they don't want to be belittled they don't want to be criticized what they want to do is show their love for you and be able to help and be of assistance if we approach it the right way as simple as that and I had to learn that lesson too because I would just let things faster and do everything myself until I couldn't anymore and then I would just attack the shit out of everybody in sight I really wouldn't I mean I can I could have I used to be vicious when it came to that because I would feel like and it was really self-imposed because I'm the one that would automatically clean up and do all this so nobody thought anything of it they must have thought I like to do it you know what I mean so we do need to convey those messages messages of why we need help now look at this you are going to be really studying learning and toiling away to get you um, to get you to the places you want to go and you're gonna have this beautiful fool energy which is one of my favorite cards because this says adventure let's savor everything let's seek fun let's get let's get some vision going here let's breathe let's ease into this let's be forgiving and graceful and light and playful and take care of ourselves. right let's let's go meet and greet and know the universe has our back you know I have confidence in my resilience and strength I'm focusing on whatever I can do within my control most importantly I'm feeling joy and hope the fool is always hopeful because it knows that it's divinely protected I do live my life like this and I always feel calmer because I like to approach life with a sense of adventure because I'm mutable fire as a Sagittarius I'm always I need to discover new things and have new um, everything all the time like I see it thinks it's so crazy I never ever 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 buy any of the same products twice because I want to try everything on the market except for a few things like I love Clarins um, moisturizer and a couple things like that but other than that I want to try all new products constantly um, fabrics outlays like I get really excited when I go in a fabric store because I love new patterns new everything and the fool says go experiment and then because I get to do this I can be patient and kind with myself and other people because I know there's always a sense of adventure that I can have. I never feel like anything's stagnant. So you're really going to be into that that fun sense, you know, building resilience. And again, it's like I observe things. This this is very important, you know. Be a magnifying glass. Look closely inside and outside of yourself. Be aware. Be a detective in your life. Hold off on verbalizing what you see until you've taken it all in. I do this in circumstances within my family. I'll watch kind of like the, you know, interpersonal interactions. And then if I see something I don't like, I hold it in and really observe. Then I describe it to myself like I'm a dictionary. I name the experiences I'm seeing. I keep it simple. And then when I can, I have to convey that if something is wrong, I put it into words to my family. But definitely look under things. Observe first. Too often people are too quick to speak and they don't have all the facts. They don't know what what's going on so just really really observe and also participate you know be actively involved experience your emotions don't let the moment pass help others participate be part of their life seek seek for reasons to be together I constantly do this I love this like when um ever anybody pops out of their rooms because everybody's always on their devices and doing stuff when people come out and they're making snacky snacks and they're all happy and they're listening to music that's when I want to participate and see what's going on with their day what their plans are stuff like that it's really nice to do that and I feel like that's part of that because then your needs for social interaction with your family for support for love for moments to for you to convey messages of love like I don't like a whole day to go by and not have like a meaningful conversation or connection with someone in my family you know so I definitely like to jump on that because it is important you know to know that people are well and they're feeling good and laugh you know I feel like in less than 15 minutes a day we can start the process of healing our mind our body and our spirit we just let go of everything that holds us back chaotic minds we have to allow healing energy to flow through us by slowing things down operate a little differently a little more light-hearted and when we know something's going wrong we look into it 
we get that magnifying glass out. Why do I feel heavy when I interact with that person or I participate in this? What is going on with that little bit of um, knowledge seeking in this? And then we can alleviate the pressure and the needless anxiety that goes along with certain interactions with people or places, right? Yeah, really lighthearted spirit and feeling good about things, group three. So that is you guys. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to press like and subscribe. And if you subscribe over here and you follow me on Instagram, you are automatically entered in all my giveaways every single week. I just do a fun um, pulling of cards. So it's all just, you know, based on luck. And I love doing these and giving back to you because you guys, you guys are amazing. Again, if you need a private read or anything else, that little gray arrow brings you to everything down below. My Etsy store, all, everything else, all the links. And um, I appreciate you guys and all your comments and your support. You're absolutely amazing. And I couldn't do this without you guys. So love and light to you.